first thing I want to do is take off the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, take off all six of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. If your wheel is stuck on like this one, go ahead and start a lug nut on and then hammer from the backside. Make sure you hit the tire, not the rim. Uh, this is going to prevent it from flying off when it finally breaks free. All right, now take this off. and remove your wheel. Next, I want to take off these two 17 millimeter bolts to remove the caliper off the bracket. Okay, leave that one in just a couple threads. Perfect, now remove them both. Set those aside and then you can take the caliper and flip it up and over. Make sure it doesn't put any pressure on the brake hose. Now you can remove your old pads, I'll take them apart I guess first, and do the same to this one. <laughs> Next thing you want to do is remove these two 17 millimeter bolts. There's one. Take this one off as well. Now you can take the bracket completely off. Now with your new caliper here on the bench, go ahead and disassemble it. Flip this over and leave this here for now. And what I want to do is take these uh, anti-rattle clips off. I'll do them one at a time so that I don't uh, confuse where they go. Add some grease. You want to add this grease here to prevent rust from building up. And if you do take them all off, just know that this little hook right here, the single hook goes on the inner part and then it has the double hook on the outer part. Start it out on the uh, inside part first and press it on and do the same to all four. Okay, now let's install the bracket. Go ahead and line up your caliper bracket and I cleaned up the threads on these bolts. If you, if you wanted to use some thread locker, go ahead and do so. If not, uh, definitely don't put any grease or any seize on the threads, just leave them be as is. Okay, bottom these out and then torque them to 65 foot-pounds. Perfect, now let's get the pads in. Sometimes it's a little tricky to line them up. You have to press in, inward that way, but also inward this way at the same time. And they have to start in at an angle. Perfect. Make sure that when they're in, they can easily move. I'm gonna put some grease on the inside of these boots here. What this is going to do is it's going to provide a reserve of grease for the new sliders. If you put a lot of grease on the sliders, uh, a lot of times it just gets uh, wiped off as you try to slide it in. So like I said, this is going to act more as a reserve. Go ahead and install your caliper onto the bracket here. Make sure it lines up with the boots. Slide in your slider pins and start them on. Okay, bottom them out and then torque them to 65 foot-pounds. Awesome. All right, so for this step, I'm gonna use my air gun to remove the bolt just because it hasn't been broken free yet. You can break it free uh, before you remove the caliper. That's usually easiest. Perfect, the caliper will leak, set this aside. Remove the uh, bolt, make sure these washers come off of the brake hose. And looks like both of them did come off. Yep, one is stuck right here, which I'll have to remove. And remove the other one too, throw those away. Now you wanna clean off the bolt, make sure there's no debris on it. And then Take one of the new washers, slide it on, then put the bolt through the hose, then slide on the other washer 
And what these are going to do, they're copper, so they are soft metal. What they're going to do is when you tighten it, they'll crush and seal up. So from the back side, you see these two cutouts here. That's where the line is going to have to go in and match up. Thread in the bolt. Make sure it doesn't cross thread. Bottom it out, and then we'll snug it. I'm going to use a ratchet wrench. Just bottom it out. So at this point, it's bottomed out. And to make it snug, I'm going to go between a quarter and half a turn. So that was about a third of a turn right there. Um, what that's going to do is crush these two gaskets or washers, like I said, and hopefully seal up. Now I want to clean up my mess here because if there's fluid already there, you don't know if it springs a leak for some reason. So make sure it's nice and dry. That way you can clearly see if for some reason you have a leak. The next thing to do is going to be opening up this bleeder screw. Now with a 10 millimeter, open up this bleeder screw. And what I want to do is let gravity do its thing. It's going to pull the fluid down into the caliper, push the air out. Once a steady trickle of fluid comes out of here, I can close it up and then perform a manual brake bleed. And what that entails is with this bleeder screw closed, check your master cylinder and make sure it's full. Then have someone in the car pumping the brake pedal. After you pump it two to three times, hold pressure on the brake pedal, crack the bleeder screw open, fluid and potentially air is going to come out. Close it up once the pedal reaches the floor then pump up the brakes again and repeat the steps until there's no more air coming out of here. Once that's done, top off your master cylinder again and then we'll come back here and close it up. All right, I have a steady trickle of fluid. Close up the bleeder, make it nice and snug. And at this point you could perform your manual brake bleed. After you're done with that, clean up the area. Reinstall your cap and let's put the wheel back on. Go ahead and get the wheel on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then we'll torque them to 83 foot-pounds. Torque these to 83 foot-pounds. 